Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Emily Coutrere, Preston here at A&M Texarkana. I hope uh, you're ready to join us with, with your questions. Uh, I'm here to, to take questions and to my, the best of my ability, provide answers uh, for you. When I say I'm here, I'm here in the um, UC, right in front of the John Moss Library. So if you'd like to come up and join us live, if you're in here, you're, you're welcome to. We have several people um, who have joined us here. To ask questions, uh, we, we invited, I'd like to say we invited, we may have forced uh, one yeah. of our students, uh, Tim Frith here. Um, he has some of the questions that you sent in early that he is going to ask me. And then as, as you send in questions, we'll get them relayed to him so he can ask them. Now, Tim, I think you ought to know, is a senior here at A&M Texarkana and has certainly been very much affected by the, the COVID-19 virus. Um, fortunately, he was already taking classes online, so next week won't affect him in that way. But he is a senior baseball player and his senior season um, has been canceled because of the COVID-19 virus. So I think it, you know, he really is a good person to be asking, asking the question. So I'll turn it over to Tim to, to go with our first one. Okay. How long will we be doing online classes? That's the question everybody wants to have the answer to. Um, and as I might tell you, this might be the answer for, answer for a lot of the questions. The most truthful and honest answer is, I don't know. Uh, we have face-to-face -face classes canceled for the week after spring break, which is next week, and that's the 23rd through the 27th. Uh, we are constantly evaluating, and if it has to go longer than that, we will let you know as soon as possible. In the letter we sent out, we said we try and let people know the, the Thursday, um, every week on a Thursday, uh, if we know sooner than that, we will certainly let you know sooner than that. But right now, classes have been canceled only for the week after spring break. And when that changes, if that changes, we'll let you know as soon as possible. Number two, what if the outbreak gets really serious? Will the kids continue online classes? Well, yes, um, as the, if the outbreak spreads even more than it has now, and we are instructed uh, by the state, by the city, by the system or the country uh, to suspend classes for longer. That's exactly what we'll do. Or if it's in our best judgment to suspend classes longer, that's what we'll do. What do seniors do about the grad fair? Okay, the grad fair, for those of you who don't know, the grad fair uh, usually in the lobby of the UC, we have all kinds of booths set up for invitations and for caps and gowns, uh, for rings, and to join the Alumni Association. Uh, it's a fun day, and um, unfortunately, if we are not in school at the time, we'll have to go online with that, but um, it won't be the end of the world. I know the people who would put it online uh, will make it fun for you, and just about everything you have to order has to be ordered online. So invitations, cap and gown and rings can all be ordered online. What should seniors do about the career fair? Career fair, um, hopefully we'll be back in school, but if we're not, uh, I know that the director of the career services um, or the what, career development office um, is working on finding a way to put that online and make it, make it interesting and fun and engaging as well. Lastly, what should seniors do about commencement? Commencement. We will have commencement. Right now, commencement is scheduled for May 15th. If we have to move it, we will, but we will have commencement. That's something we all look forward to. It's the best day of the year. And I hope we can have it on schedule, but if we can't, we'll have it. What do students do if they don't have access to a computer or internet? We know that that might be the case uh, for some of our students, and uh, we have people on campus who are looking into ways to, to make that situation better. So if you are in that situation where you don't have a computer and or you don't have the internet, what we need you to do is 
send that information to our COVID-19 email. Uh, it was in a letter that was sent out to you. I think they're putting it up on the screen now. And the email is COVID-19 update, all one word, all lowercase, um, at tamut.edu. And actually you can use that for any of your questions. But if you don't have a computer, you don't have access to the internet, please be sure to use it. And on a case by case basis, we'll figure out what we need to do um, to help you because we don't want you left out because of this. Will the students be provide, will the university be providing the students any reimbursements for the remainder of the semester? We don't know the answer uh, to that yet on reimbursements. Uh, this has all happened very quickly. We don't know how long um, this will go on, but when we do know more, we'll be sure to let you know. If we do return to campus, will there be mandatory testing? Will there be testing available? And how do you plan on handling people who arrive to campus and then need to be quarantined? Okay, uh, as far as testing goes, I assume that that means uh, testing for the COVID-19 uh, virus. We will not ha have the capacity, as far as I know, um, to, to do the actual test. We know where to send people. Uh, we may make um, available thermometers for the students to test themselves as people do when they're um, coming in on a plane where they can test their temperature, but not for the virus. But being able to test for the temperature is a good idea. Or when you come back to campus, you might wanna bring a thermometer with you so you can test your own. As far as quarantine goes, if, if it comes to that, uh, we're prepared. We have a couple of rooms set aside that are always clean and ready to go should we need to put anyone in quarantine. What about the biology labs for science majors? Biology labs for science majors? Uh, we have a wonderfully creative group of biology faculty. Well, I should say we have a wonderfully creative group of faculty, period. But our biology faculty have been working on this since COVID-19 first appeared and they're, they're all prepared to put their biology labs online. Are labs completely canceled since it, it requires us to physically use components not available to us at home? Well, believe it or not, um, all of our faculty are looking at the labs. We don't want you to have signed up for a lab where you're getting credit hours and it's necessary for you to graduate and then cancel them because of this. So they have our faculty have come up with ways, uh, creative ways for you to do um, their labs online and complete the course. If I find out school is back on for next week on a Thursday, it will be difficult for me to get back to campus by Monday. Will that count against me? It, it will not count against you. Um, you'll need to talk with your faculty and let them know why you can't get back. But as I said a little bit earlier, um, we definitely will want to let you know as soon as possible. And that question's a really good one for me to hear um, because we do need to take into account that for some people it would be hard to get back on a Monday if we don't tell them until Thursday. So we will let you know as soon as possible um, if classes are going to be suspended for another week or so. Will the Eagle Pantry be open? The Eagle Pantry, yes, it will be open tomorrow Wednesday, um, it's going to be open from nine to one, and then it will be open on an individual basis. Um, I know the, the folks in Student Life who run the food pantry um, have an email address. Um, you can write to them and they will make sure that, um, that you are um, able to, to access the pantry. And the email address is eaglepantry at tamut.edu, again, Eagle Pantry, one word, lowercase. Will the experimental learning showcase go on as planned? Uh, the experimental, or ex I think, is it experimental, Ex experiential? experiential? Okay, good. Uh, that, the learning showcase um, will definitely go on as long as the campus is open. If the campus isn't open, it will have to be postponed. How will it affect education majors with student teaching and observation hours? My understanding about um, student teaching and observation hours is that your faculty in that area are working with the Texas Education Agency as well as with the schools 
to see that your what you need for your um, certificate is taken your in degree that that's taken care of. Actually, hold on for a second. I've got an expert in the room who knows for sure. Um, Dean Dowdy. Uh, yeah, in the state of uh, disaster, which we're in, uh -huh. uh, the Texas Education Agency has a provision that allows us to extend the uh, clinical period by 90 days and to decrease uh, percentage of time that students so, uh, within a certain time frame, we'll be just fine. Okay. Um, you may not have been able to hear uh, Dean Dowdy, who's the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences and Education, uh, but the bottom line is that they have, um, have worked and uh, worked really hard and looked up the rules, and you will be able to do what you need to do. He says, okay. It's, it's a little bit more legalistic than what I just said, but it will be okay. Will student workers still get paid? Uh, student workers will be paid. And will final exams continue to be online? Question was about uh, would final exams be online? Um, honest answer is I don't know. Uh, it depends upon whether or not we are back at campus. If we're not back on campus, um, then they most certainly will be online. If the school reopens, will students go back to the same dorm room? If the school reopens, um, if we're ready to go, students who live in BLV, uh, where that's home, will definitely go back to their same rooms. Another question's coming in. How will students return books? Students, I assume that means to the library um, to return books. Oh, rented textbooks. You know, that I don't know the answer to, but that's why I have a piece of paper and a pen because that's something we'll look into and we'll get up on our COVID-19 webpage. If uh, you haven't seen it, uh, I think there's a slide that's going to come across which will show you the, the web address for our COVID-19 webpage. Um, that's where we're, we'll put all the latest updates. And that's a really good question that we'll be sure to get up on that webpage. So thank you, whoever sent that in. Any more questions, John? Okay, uh, we're going to go to a break really quickly and then we'll be back with some more questions. Thanks. Welcome back. Um, it's Emily Coutrere and Tim Frith again for questions and answers about uh, A&M Texarkana's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, while we were away, we got a few more questions, so I'm going to turn to Tim again and see what we have for you. First of the new questions, should students attend their internships if their agency is still active? On the internship um, question, and I know a lot of people have questions about their internships. The good thing, as far as I'm concerned, is that we have a lot of students doing internships. The difficult thing is that there are a lot of uh, various answers. So. What you need to do if you have an internship is get in touch with your supervising professor. Um, your professor will know how to answer you for your particular situation and uh, your special case. So as soon as possible, if you have not yet heard from your professor about your internship, get in touch with them. Will there be fines for late library books? No fines for late library books. I don't know if the library heard me say that or not, but there are no fines for library books. Can students receive packages? Uh, receiving packages, yes, students can receive packages. Uh, it's one of the things we've been working on a lot for the last few days is how mail and packages will, will get to students in the university. So um, we will be receiving packages um, and 
students who are in the residence hall will receive a message uh, that they have a package to pick up. Will admissions and transfer applications be processed as normal? Uh, all of our usual processes will go on, only they will be going on remotely. So yes, admissions, uh, transfers, all of those things will be taken care of. Um, our staff has been working through that this week and they are all ready to go without missing a beat uh, when they move uh, to working remotely Thursday. Will the cafeteria be running their normal hours? The cafeteria will not be running its normal hours again until the university is fully open. Uh, for students who are staying in the residence hall in BLD, uh, the food service will be providing meals, but the, the hours will differ somewhat from the, the usual hours. Will students have the option to continue online courses? Absolutely. If you're in an online class, just keep on going with it. Right, Tim? I think Tim has a bunch of online courses. Every single one of them. Mm -hmm. Will students have time to move out of their dormitory? Uh, yes, students will have time to move out of, out of BLV. What we're asking students to do is to get in touch with housing to, to make an appointment if you need something right now. So let's see, I think we have that uh, email address that we can put up on the screen, but it is housing at tamut.edu. Write, write to that uh, email address, uh, say that you need to get into your room and they'll make an appointment to help you out with it. Will the sports seasons being canceled affect athletic scholarship funds? Uh, the cancellation of sports of events this spring will not affect scholarship funds. As far as the Patterson Student Center is concerned, will it be open? Campus is closed uh, while, while our classes have been moved to online, so the Patterson Center will not be open until the campus reopens. A couple of things that I, while we're waiting for some more questions that I might point out, we um, gave you an email address a little bit ago. Uh, we had, I think up there, uh, COVID-19 update at tamut.edu. Please use that uh, email address to send in questions that you think of, you know, later on tonight, tomorrow, in a few days, if something comes up. We're routing those remarks and those questions to the most appropriate people so that we can get, get answers for you. But don't hesitate. This isn't the only time that you can, you can ask questions. There's certainly other times that you can. What is the plan for the big event? Uh, the plan for the big event is to hope that the COVID-19 virus goes away and we can have uh, the big event. It is really an important uh, event here on campus. So if we can have it, we will have it. Uh, it just depends upon how long um, the issues with the virus continue. What if this continues into the summer or fall? Let's all pray it doesn't <laughs> continue into the summer and fall, but, but if it does, then we will be uh, working very hard to deliver the same quality of education and have the same kind of student support um, that, that we traditionally have. Um, we'll move into online courses and talk about what kinds of campus facilities will be available. But let's hope that we don't get to that. How will this affect new student orientation? It shouldn't affect new student orientation um, if we're able to get back to normal in the summer. Uh, right now, we've got them um, filling up, um, actually, as I speak. Um, if, so if you're thinking about coming to new student orientation, please go ahead and sign up because uh, we're, we're planning on running them unless we receive word otherwise. Something else that I might add while we're, while we're waiting for a few more questions, um, we will be taking these questions and using them really as the, the backbone uh, for a, an FAQ page that we will have available on the, on the website. Um, so, Thank you. You're helping others by sending in questions because I'm sure if you have a question, others have, have the same one. And you can, if you forget what the answer is or if the answer changes, then uh, it will be available to you on the COVID-19 website.
Okay. Um, we've had people ask again about uh, refunds for BLV and food, and uh, the answer earlier is one that I know people don't like, but it's the honest answer, and that is, I don't know yet. Uh, this has happened suddenly, and we are still working through that. Our first priority has been working on, on instruction and student support. I think maybe... Maybe it's time for a short break. Yeah. Okay, let's we'll take another short break. Welcome back. Uh, this again is A and M Texarkana, Emily Couture and Tim Fripp here to to get your questions and uh, provide answers as best we can uh, as we face all the dislocation and the ambiguity um, that has proceeded from the COVID-19 situation. Uh, while we were on break, a couple of questions came through that I thought I'd just go ahead and address. Um, one, a couple of questions from, uh, I think from education majors who were concerned, had very um, specific and detailed questions about their major. Um, I'm asking um, that our director of teacher preparation uh, get something out uh, to our education majors uh, to help them understand a, a bit more about the situation. But I also want to remind you that um, one of the best things to do is just to, to reach out directly to, to your faculty members. So a really good resource, wonderful resource for you is Dr. Strunk. Um, and her email address is A-S-T-R-U-N-C at T-A-M-U-T dot E-D-U. The other question that is, has been asked is if we do come back uh, to school, if the campus reopens before the end of the semester, people with a variety of situations who feel like they might be better served if they didn't come back, what should they do? Again, I, those are the kinds of questions that I think are probably best dealt with individually. Um, and I would urge, if you have a question about that, that you contact uh, your dean. If you're in the College of Arts, Sciences, and Education, that would be Dr. Dell Dowdy. And if you're in the College of Business, um, Education, and Technology, that would be Dr. Gary Stadding. Um, I think I know their email addresses, but rather than give you the wrong one, um, I encourage you to look that up. Answer, and actually answer for students, if you have any uh, very specific question about your program and how best to fulfill it is to, is to write your dean. Back to the questions. How will students be advised to register for next fall? Okay, to register for next fall, um, you'll actually do it the way you've always done it, which is to register online. If we are still in uh, the kind of mode we're in right now uh, during registration period or leading up to registration period, our, our advisors have been working very hard the last few days to be able to meet with students virtually, either through um, well, either through a phone call or through FaceTime or some, some other mechanism so that you can get advised by your advisors. And if you have any questions too, that's a, another great resource for you is to go to, go to your advisors. They, they, of course, take your success very much to heart. And I might also add, because they're all in the same office, that um, our tutoring uh, group is also prepared to do uh, their work online. Um, they, can, they can do tutoring online. They can do tutoring via FaceTime. Um, they can tutor you um, with, through email. So don't think that those services are closed down. They're not. They're just going to be done a little bit differently from the way they were done before. When will you decide if the fall semester will be online? It will be quite a while uh, before we would decide about the fa fall semester. Um, I would imagine um, it would be well into the summer before we would make that, make that decision. 
So let's all, let's all hope that we don't have to go into fall like this. What is the process for students who came back to campus from a level two student city? If you come back from a level two city, um, then I think it's just the same as, as everyone else. If you come back from a level two country, um, you will need to, to have a test. What is and when I say a test, pardon me, I'm Tim. No. Uh, when I say a test, you'll have to have a COVID-19 test and uh, be, let me take that back. That's the wrong answer. Um, I see, I, you have two weeks <laughs> of self, of self isolation. You don't have to get a test. You have two weeks of self isolation where you're monitoring for symptoms. What is the determining factor for the school to reopen this semester? Well, the determining factor um, is the extent of the COVID-19 virus and the recommendations, particularly that we get locally from our uh, local health people and our state people um, about what to do. Um, we're monitoring it constantly. And if the, the advice is uh, that we need to close, we definitely will. If we believe we need to close, we will, because our first priority always is the health and safety of our of our university community if you live out of state could you continue online classes if campus reopens um, let me go back to two this is a, another case of if someone um, would like to continue with online classes for a personal reason that again is a, a case of getting in touch with um, with your dean to to talk through what the options are Looks like we've run out of questions for a while. Oh, I've got a little sign here that says wrap it up. So I don't have any wrapping paper here. I don't have any bows, but, uh, and I wish we could wrap things up. Um, it isn't, uh, this isn't a situation where everything is resolved quickly and where everything is resolved very neatly. We're dealing, all of us, all across this world, are dealing with a situation that is changing very quickly. Um, and we just have to take it, in some cases, day to day, looking at the, the larger goal, which is to maintain the health and safety of our community while continuing we, to do everything we possibly can to ensure that our students get the kind of education that they expected to get this year. So if there are things that this university can do for you, I hope you will take advantage of the email address we have and let us know. Uh, your emails, are, we pay a lot of attention to them. They're very important to us, they're very helpful to us, and we wanna be helpful to you. Thanks.